The Honourable Jason Kenney is the 18th Premier of Alberta. He was first elected as a Member of Parliament and held numerous federal cabinet positions before returning to Alberta in 2016. And in April 2019, he led his party to a majority government. He's been instrumental in advancing the hydrogen roadmap and it's my great pleasure to introduce our Premier to you for a keynote. Dale, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, what an impressive turnout. 2,000 people for Canada's first uh, hydrogen convention. Uh, welcome to Alberta. We're so proud to be hosting you, especially those of you who are visiting us from across Canada and around the world. Thank you so much, Dale, to you and, and ATCO, and happy 75th anniversary. Uh, for those of you who don't know, ATCO is a classic example of the Alberta entrepreneurial spirit. It started out in the back of its founders, uh, Quonset Hut, Ron Southern's farm in, uh, 75 years ago and has become a major global supplier of energy and uh, innovation. We're very proud of ATCO's achievements uh, as a proud Alberta company. Thank you as well, Chief Archant of uh, Treaty 6, for welcoming us here to your traditional territory. And I'm really happy to be joined by Alberta's Minister for uh, Natural Gas and Electricity, Dale Nally and the Minister for uh, Jobs, Economy and Innovation, Doug Schweitzer. Friends, now is a time to be optimistic about Alberta's future. We are blessed with so many natural advantages that have once again positioned this province to capture a, a significant global position as an energy exporter and a leader in clean energy. The Canadian energy sector is taking huge steps to lower emissions and this is a pivotal time as Alberta's energy sector looks to tell our story to the world which needs affordable, reliable and secure energy. Hydrogen is the next chapter in the story that Albertans have been writing for almost a century uh, where we have seen uh, Alberta on the forefront of responsible energy development from bitumen to conventional oil, from natural gas to renewables. Our story is one of hard work and innovation. Alberta has always stepped up, not just in a supporting role, but as the leader of Canada's energy sector, the largest sector in Canada's economy, and now as a leader in the global effort to reduce emissions. We're gathered here today to talk about the future of hydrogen uh, in this province and across Canada and to announce, as I will later, a new centre to support Made in Alberta Energy Solutions to grow Alberta's share of the future multi-trillion dollar global hydrogen industry. All of you in this room recognize the huge potential of hydrogen, obviously. You are amongst the world's leaders uh, in the field and you're setting the stage for years of future prosperity by being here at the first Canadian Hydrogen Convention. It's exciting to see such a huge turnout and to be part of the momentum that is we can all feel. I hope the convention becomes a premier global event moving forward as more and more people realize the potential that hydrogen offers to solve global problems. As the first uh, to ever host such an event, we have the distinct pleasure of telling Alberta's story to the world, a story of innovation, of experience, of abundant resources because Alberta is blessed with the geology that allows enormous potential for low carbon energy. I hope after experiencing what we have to offer, when you think about North American hydrogen production, you'll think of Alberta. The hydrogen sector is moving so fast, it's almost hard to believe where we've come in just the last couple of years. Yet here we are at a dedicated Canadian hydrogen convention in the midst of Alberta's first official Hydrogen Week, which Minister Nally just proclaimed, this province will always celebrate the pioneers in Alberta's oil and gas history who built so much of our prosperity. We must carry on their legacy of innovation and hard work, the get-her-done Alberta spirit that is unique to this province, and we carry that legacy on by being leading characters in this emerging industry. Like many jurisdictions around the world, 
Alberta is excited by the potential of hydrogen, both in terms of economic and environmental benefits. The basic environmental benefits are clear enough, namely no carbon or particulate emissions are created when hydrogen is used, but hydrogen has unique abilities to decarbonize industries that would otherwise have a very hard time of doing so. This is a big part of its appeal as an important component in the future low emission global energy system and economy. While energy sources like our traditional, traditional oil and gas plus renewable electricity will play a key role in the future, hydrogen's potential to reduce emissions is just starting to get tapped. Along with its environmental benefits, clean hydrogen can be produced, of course, in many different ways, which makes it resilient to supply disruptions, the kind of disruptions we're seeing in global energy markets today. With different production methods, customers will have more options when looking for ways to, grow the, to expand the use of hydrogen. And that growth potential explains why companies and governments around the world are positioning themselves to capitalize on the clean hydrogen opportunity. Canada, and Alberta in particular, are amongst those places that are ready to begin the shift towards a hydrogen-powered future. We've seen estimates for the hydrogen sector ranging from $2.5 to $11 trillion in global value by the year 2050. But whatever the size will end up being, we know that Alberta will be a key global hub and provider in that enormous future market. We have everything that we needed to become major producer of clean, reliable, and affordable hydrogen energy. We've got the natural resources, including enormous capacity in natural gas, the fifth largest proven and probable gas reserves in the world, over 200 years worth of supply at current production levels. We have the geology needed safely to store carbon emissions connected with production of hydrogen. In fact, the Boston uh, Consulting Group estimates that Alberta has the second best geological formation in the world for carbon sequestration. We have a growing renewable sector, in fact, the, fast, in fact, the fastest growing in Canada, and that can support, support clean hydrogen production across the province through a number of different production methods. And Alberta has experience as Canada's leading hydrogen producer already, <clears throat> along with a skilled workforce that's ready and able to supply a clean hydrogen future. Now, that last advantage is, is really at the core of what makes this province different when it comes to the hydrogen opportunity. And that is our human capital, our decades of experience in the energy industry. For over seven decades, Alberta's been at the forefront of responsible energy development, using innovation, applying tenacity, foresight and vision across the sector that has fueled so much of our provinces and our country's growth. It's just the, the development of the oil sands themselves is a miracle of modern technology and science, of massive investments in research and deve uh, development, of a constant spirit of technological innovation. All of those are traits and skills that can be applied and will be applied to hydrogen. We built on those strengths while demonstrating leadership in making energy development less emissions intensive. Just as we established the technology, capacity and workforce, as I say, to lead in oil sands development, we can pair our natural resources with our multi-decade technical knowledge in the hydrogen space. This is especially true when it comes to the opportunity to produce clean hydrogen from natural gas paired with carbon capture utilization and storage, or CCUS. We've long been a global leader in the use of CCUS, with projects like the shell-operated Quest facility successfully capturing and storing tons of uh, millions of tons of carbon dioxide deep underground, and the recent success story of the Alberta Carbon Trunk Line that is now uh, sequestering carbon captured off refineries east of Edmonton in our central Alberta sedimentary basin. And let me add that when some of my predecessors had the vision to be early embracers and investors in, in carbon sequestration technology about 15 years ago, they were widely mocked and ridiculed by many so-called experts, many in the media, 
uh, who said it was implausible, it was an unworkable technology, it was way too expensive, it would never work. Well, Alberta's vision on being an early adopter of CCUS has been vindicated in a big way. As the world rushes to, uh, uh, to make industrial application of CCUS technology. And that's why Alberta is continuing to show leadership in the sector by establishing Canada's first carbon sequestration tenure program. Under this new structure, we are advancing regional hubs operated and managed by the private sector, which will provide carbon storage and uh, capture and storage services to clients across a range of industries. And I say a range of industries because too often People think of this as only a play for oil and gas, but in, we have so many exciting projects in, with applications, obviously hydrogen, petrochemical, cement, and so much more. Our Energy Minister, Sonia Savage, recently announced the successful applicants for six potential CCUS hubs in and around the Edmonton area. If all six are approved after final regulatory review and they begin operating, they'll provide carbon storage services for companies all around this city especially in its industrial heartland just east of Edmonton. Many of these hubs will actually support efforts to decarbonize existing hydrogen production facilities. And we'll be announcing more potential hub operators soon. We look forward to ensuring Alberta remains at the forefront of this key technology to reduce emissions because we can't forget the leadership and innovation of Alberta energy producers that got us here in the first place. And let me add that we spent much of the last 18 months uh, w working very hard with the um, energy industry to get the Government of Canada to come forward with a meaningful incentive uh, similar to the 45Q in the United States that has revolutionized carbon CCUS in the, in the United States. And I'm sure you are all aware that we succeeded in getting the 50% uh, uh, CCUS investment tax credit in the recent federal budget, which radically changes the economics in a very positive way. While natural gas processes combined with CCUS are the quickest way for Alberta to increase clean hydrogen production, they are not the only way. And let me just say, that our government, we are agnostic about the form of technology, about the color of the hydrogen. We are supportive of all ways to get clean hydrogen so long as it is in fact clean. We'll let the private sector lead the way and pursue production methods that reflect the competitiveness and unique capabilities of the region that we're in. For example, in Alberta, we have a growing renewable electricity sector, as I said, the fastest growing in Canada, especially in the southern parts of the province, which could be used to produce clean uh, hydrogen through electrolysis. We also have vibrant agriculture and forestry sectors in fact, last year was the best year ever in the history of our forestry sector and the highest revenues ever in Alberta agriculture. And they too can support clean hydrogen production from biomass. So there is not a one-size-fits-all approach and each region's unique advantages will make them better suited to different kinds of production. One of the reasons we're so committed to being open to the different ways of production is because we, uh, we know that to seize the potential of hydrogen we have to be able to meet global demand. And ultimately, we want to meet that demand whichever way we can. So it really is a key part of our strategy. With so much to offer, it's no surprise that investors have recognized Alberta's potential and started exploring the development of clean energy here. Uh, hydrogen presents an opportunity to diversify what Alberta offers to global energy markets with a zero emission fuel that can be used across industries. But simply having all the tools needed to establish production is not enough to ensure that we actually build this province as a global hydrogen hub. That's why last fall we launched Alberta's Hydrogen Roadmap. It's our plan to support the development and growth of hydrogen across the economy. We know that building demand is a key part of ensuring a strong and growing hydrogen market. And that's why our roadmap identifies four key markets for hydrogen use here in Alberta, on top of the opportunities to export internationally. Industrial processes, commercial and residential heating, power generation and storage, plus transportation 
are all sectors where hydrogen can either increase the role it already plays or offer a new alternative to support the larger effort to cut emissions. The opportunity to lower emissions in the industrial sector cannot be understated and will uh, contribute to a big buildup of demand. Moving towards clean, low-carbon hydrogen will not only reduce those industries' carbon footprints, but highlight the unique opportunity that hydrogen provides. Future clusters of clean-burning industries will be fueled by hydrogen, leveraging existing infrastructure and operational efficiencies. Transportation is another example where this is true, of course. While the world is already seeing some movement towards electric vehicles, in many heavy-duty applications, large battery packs just are not a viable option. And that's where hydrogen fuel cells can offer a compelling alternative, an alternative that uh, many different industries and companies are exploring. For example, CP Rail, which just massively expanded uh, with its uh, acquisition of um, the Kansas Rail Line in the United States, and which is CP, an historic Canadian company headquartered in Calgary, well, they've already ordered a set of hydrogen fuel cell locomotives that they're testing over the next few years. And the government of Alberta is proud to have supported that project, providing funding from our Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction Fund to support the purchase. In fact, we've already committed about $60 million, that's six zero, $60 million, uh, to innovation in hydrogen since 2019 through our tier program. I look forward to seeing more collaboration between all levels of government as we move towards green solutions in transportation and expect more promising news on this in the, in the weeks to come. Even when it comes to reducing emissions, uh, when it comes to heating your home, Alberta is leading the way. For example, as we just heard, ATCO will be commencing a pilot project later this year that will blend hydrogen into the existing natural gas system for heating homes in nearby Fort Saskatchewan, just northeast of Edmonton. And we're taking a close look at policy and regulations with utilities and local governments, municipalities, to introduce, it, and we will introduce the required legislative and rate changes to make this possible once that consultation is done. Now, when it comes to power generation, hydrogen, as you know, has several potential uses. And perhaps the most exciting right now is the ability to, ability to act as a large-scale energy storage solution. With a growing renewable energy sector in this province, we can leverage renewable power to create hydrogen, store it safely underground, then use hydrogen as an energy carrier when renewable power is interrupted, helping to solve the problem of intermittency. The opportunities across these sectors are enormous and certain to grow. And Alberta's government will be there to help these technologies mature. Beyond just stoking demand, our strategy will support the growth of the larger hydrogen economy in Alberta, including, of course, through export. And this includes enabling, as I said, CCUS. It includes de-risking early investments. It includes activating technology and innovation and ensuring regulatory efficiency while leading the way with alliances between all of the groups involved in the hydrogen sector. The goal of all of these policies, of our strategy, is a simple one. Establishing the best possible regulatory system for hydrogen anywhere in the world. And we're now starting to see the fruits of this already. In the last year, we've seen hydrogen projects announced by several major international companies, some of whom I believe are represented here today, including Air Products, Itochu, Petronas, Mitsubishi, and Shell. And those are on top of major production plans, that, as we've heard, from Canadian companies like Atco and Suncor. Now, while some of these projects aim to support Alberta's growing domestic needs for clean hydrogen, several are already looking towards global markets, including clean ammonia exports to Japan. With jurisdictions around the world taking steps to integrate hydrogen into their energy systems, Alberta is in a strong position to meet the demand. Many of these companies, as I've said, are here today, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you 
for your interest and confidence in Alberta. And we are committed uh, to making your potential projects work. Based on a study that we commissioned from the University of Alberta for the, our hydrogen roadmap, we believe that we can have some of the lowest cost hydrogen net-net produced in the world. As infrastructure and demand grows and matures over uh, the coming years, having this fundamental advantage means we can position Alberta as a lo long-term leader for global hydrogen development. We're doing everything we can to ensure that Alberta is ready and willing to meet that opportunity. And this includes a key program that we introduced a couple of years ago, the Alberta Petrochemicals Incentive Program, or APIP. While obviously designed initially for the petrochemical sector, it's also open to eligible clean hydrogen production facilities that pair natural gas with CCUS. APIP is a straightforward, market-based approach to enable Alberta to compete with other regions who are developing their petrochemical and hydrogen uh, industries while ensuring taxpayers are, product, are protected, I should say. Reimbursing companies through APIP for 12% of their eligible capital costs after, but only after, a facility is up and running gives both investors and taxpayers a high level of certainty while addressing one of the costs and inhibitors of these key kinds of large facilities. We've seen major interest in the program and have already approved one project for grant funding, but the window for APIP is really just beginning to open up. We established a 10-year time frame in which projects can be completed so that industry has the chance to make sure their timing and position in the market is correct for them. And one of the reasons that we've decided to make this investment is because it also guarantees a future for many aspects of our traditional uh, uh, energy sector, in particular, decades of demand for our abundant natural gas, which means uh, huge investments in upstream exploration and production, midstream pipeline jobs, great blue collar oil field service jobs, to get that gas to the local market of petrochemical and hydrogen plants here in Alberta. So for us, it's a win-win. It represents a strong future for our traditional energy industry while diversifying and creating products that we can export around the world. Now, in addition to APIP, let me say we have something, for those of you not from Alberta, we have something we call the Alberta Advantage. And the Alberta Advantage is basically the, the sum total of all of the huge uh, fiscal, uh, cost of living, economic, human capital advantages in this province, and they are uh, numerous. So for example, our government, Alberta's government, reduced our business tax rate by one-third. So our business tax rate is about one-third lower than the average amongst other Canadian provinces. We have, of course, the lowest income taxes, no sales tax, no capital tax, no payroll tax, no land transfer tax. We have the lowest taxes in Canada by a country mile. We are also uh, aggressively pursuing deregulation of our economy across the spectrum. The goal is to re reduce by at least one-third the number of regulations imposed by the provincial government in this term of office. We've already surpassed a 20% reduction in regulation, reducing about 130,000 individual regulatory requirements with a lot more progress to come. Alberta's gone from an F to an A under the Canadian Federation of Independent Business Red Tape Reduction uh, Report Card. We have given municipalities the ability to offer uh, local property tax breaks as incentives for new major capital investments like hydrogen and pet chems. That idea came to us from the industrial heartland. And we recognize that in many of these projects, we're competing with Texas and Louisiana on the U.S. Gulf Coast and other jurisdictions with lower local taxes, with strong incentives, and now our municipalities have the ability to offer that and be more competitive. We are creating designated industrial zones. Uh, for, uh, to allow for plug-and-play where we work with reg local regulators, provincial regulators, uh, work with First Nations in consultations, local communities to get entire areas pre-approved for industrial development 
as we've done, we are doing with the uh, industrial heartland. Uh, as I mentioned, the federal government has stepped forward with the investment tax credit for carbon capture, utilization, and storage. So our fiscal advantages are enormous. So too is our cost of living advantage. But perhaps most importantly, we have a huge workforce advantage with the youngest population in Canada, the highest incidence of post-secondary education, and particularly in STEM disciplines. But our government believes that the biggest challenge we'll be facing in, as a province in the years to come will likely be a skill and labor shortage. Despite the fact that we are once again becoming a huge magnet for talent from across Canada, we are determined to attract a disproportionately large share of newcomers, immigrants from around the world. But we're also investing through the uh, skills to job strategy and the Alberta at work strategy, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in ensuring that the Albertans have the skills for the kinds of jobs that will be created in the construction of so many of these projects and this green tech. So before wrapping up, I'd like to announce the launch of Alberta's Clean Hydrogen Centre of Excellence, to which we've committed $50 million over the next four years. Put simply, the centre will act as an accelerator for promising hydrogen technologies being developed in the province. We want Alberta companies to be at the forefront of building a vibrant and robust hydrogen economy, so the centre will be tasked with identifying promising technologies and moving them along the path to commercial success. Whether it's perfecting a production process or finding a new way to integrate hydrogen into our energy system, Alberta innovators, researchers and businesses will uh, have always found new ways to keep our province in the forefront of energy development and we're confident that we'll continue to do just that. The Clean Hydrogen Centre of Excellence will help along the way. The centre will focus on filling an important gap in the existing innovation ecosystem that exists across all the levels of government and private sector companies. The centre will advance projects that are relatively early in their development while building the partnerships needed for them to succeed. It will move uh, projects from the initial proof of concept phase towards working prototypes. The centre will be equipped with everything it needs to achieve this goal because the organisation that will be running the centre has a great track record and that's Alberta Innovates, which operates a, a number of programs and centres that drive technology development and their adoption in Alberta. Now, uh, they will add the center of excellence to their impressive portfolio of innovation services. With Alberta Innovate's experience and expertise in moving made in Alberta solutions to, to the commercial market, we're thrilled that the team at Alberta Innovate's will operate the center of excellence. Our $50 million commitment will include $10 million of capital funding to buy equipment and set up testing facilities. The centre will seek to attract an additional $150 million in funding, grants and investments from other levels of government and the private sector. Our combination of affordable, scalable, clean hydrogen production, our talented workforce, our culture of innovation, all means that Alberta is in excellent shape to stand tall with world leaders in hydrogen. Our roadmap and this new centre of excellence are key parts of Alberta's recovery plan. That's our plan to grow our economy, create jobs and diversify. Adding hydrogen to the opportunities that Alberta presents for both investors and job seekers alike is another reason why we believe Alberta is the best place to live, work and raise a family. With all the pieces laid out in the roadmap, APIP and now the Center of Excellence, the whole Alberta advantage, our government is committed to doing our part to seeing this growing industry not only succeed, but thrive. So thank you very much for being here, for being part of history and being part of developing our future. God bless. Thank you very much.